All right, students. Um, we'll be sketching the graphs for a vertical throw of a ping pong ball, starting from the instant the ball leaves the hand to the instant it returns to the hand. So we've done it before, isn't it? Isn't it just a straight line graph with a constant gradient of negative 9.81 meter per second square? Nope. The VT graph is different this time, because this time it's a ping pong ball. For a ping pong ball, air resistance is probably not negligible. So on the way up, the ball encounters a downward air resistance in the same direction as the weight. So the two will add up to give a net force that's larger than mg. So the acceleration is going to be more than 9.81 meter per second squared downward. What about when a ball is falling? When a ball is falling, it also encounters air resistance, but this time the air resistance is going to be upward in opposite direction to mg. So it's a subtraction now. That means the net force is going to be smaller than mg and the acceleration is also uh, smaller than 9.81 meter per second square. Okay, so let's give it another shot. So on the way up, the acceleration is stronger than 9.81 meter per second square, so the graph is steeper. Then on the way down, um, since the acceleration is weaker than g, so the graph is also uh, not as steep. So is this a correct graph? Wrong, huh? Wrong. Because it shouldn't be straight. Because on the way up, as v decreases continuously, the air resistance also decreases continuously. So the net force decreases continuously and so does the acceleration. On the way down, uh, it's the same thing, huh? So on the way down, as the ball uh, speeds up, the velocity increases continuously, the air resistance will increase continuously, and the acceleration will decrease continuously. So the gradient of the VT graph should also change continuously. So it should be a curve. It shouldn't be straight lines. And what about when the ball is at the peak? You know there's always something special at the peak. So at the peak, the ball is stationary. So if you're stationary, there's no air resistance and the net force will be just mg and the acceleration should be exactly equals to 9.81 meter per second square when you're at the top. So what does that mean? That means your VT graph should look like this. It starts off steeper than g, flattens out as it rises and the downward air resistance force weakens. To become as steep as g when it's at the peak, where the air resistance is zero. And then it continues to flatten out as it falls and as the air resistance strengthens. So how do we know where to end the graph? Remember, the area under the VT graph represents displacement. So if we are ending the graph where the ball returns to the same level, same height level, then the positive area, which represents the rise height, must be matched by the negative area, which represents the fall height. Just aggaration, all right? Just aggaration. All right, let's take a moment to marvel at our exquisitely drawn graph. Just by admiring the graph, we can tell that it takes the ball longer to fall down than for it to go up. This kind of makes sense, huh? Because the ball decelerates sharply on the way up, but accelerates uh, leisurely on the way down because the air resistance uh, help you to decelerate on the way up, but it, but it prevents you from accelerating on the way down. Also, the ball returns to the hand at a speed that's lower than when it left the hand. Again, uh, this, uh, this makes sense because there's Ke lost to air resistance. All right, we're done with the VT graph. Let's move on to the AT graph, which should be easy. So if air resistance is negligible, then the acceleration would have been a constant, downward, negative 9.81 meter per second square. With air resistance, the acceleration is still going to be downward, but it starts off stronger than 9.81, becomes 9.81 at the peak, and then weaker than 9.81 after that. As for the ST graph, if the air resistance is negligible, then it would have been this symmetrical quadratic curve. With air resistance, it loses a symmetry. As mentioned just now, it takes longer to come down than to go up. 
and pay attention to the gradients. Huh? So the gradient at the start of the graph should be drawn steeper than the gradient uh, at the end because these gradients correspond to the speed at which the ping pong ball leaves the hand and at which it returns to the hand. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!